Uh, another tip from Uncle Creepy. I oftentimes get calls from uh, customers who are learning free motion quilting and their complaint is that their machine seems to be skipping or there's loops on the bottom or loops on the top of the fabric and they think that the machine has uh, got a mechanical issue. One thing I always tell people, uh, regardless of what the problem seems to be, if you suspect a problem with your sewing machine, the best way to find out if it's the machine or if it's a problem with the technique that you're using or uh, something in the technique itself, set your machine up for regular sewings if you're just going to sew a couple of pieces of fabric together with a straight stitch. Do that, run your straight stitch, run your stitch length, reverse. If the machine is sewing properly at that point, then the machine is not the problem. The next thing you can try is sew a, sew a zigzag pattern, anything with a width. I use just the regular zigzag at full width. If the machine sews that properly with no tension issues, the chances are it's not your machine that's the problem. You may need a different needle or a different thread, something like that, but there may be a problem with your technique. Uh, with regards to free motion, the most common problem that we find is a problem that's actually got a name. It's called flagging. Flagging is uh, a problem in free motion work, in embroidery work, in freehand monogramming, anything that is eliminating the feed on your machine and being replaced with either a hoop, uh, which would be a fabric in a hoop that you're going to hand embroider uh, on the machine, or um, could be just an embroidery machine. But to demonstrate what the condition actually is, uh, we've got a piece of knit fabric. We've set this machine up this way so we can show what's happening and why uh, this flagging occurs and how you can eliminate it. We've used uh, this soft knit fabric to kind of uh, expand the uh, problem a bit. I'm going to turn the machine by hand and as the needle goes down uh, you can see it go through the fabric and it's going to continue down and at the point where it reaches the bottom of the travel it is now pushed the fabric down into the needle plate slot a little bit. Now for a moment I'm going to show you uh, in a bigger view what's happening. What I have here is uh, a wooden uh, replica of a household sewing machine needle. It has a flat side that orientates your eye to the hook. And this needle also has a thread groove in it. And that's where your thread is going to go as it goes down through the fabric. It's going to fit into that groove. This is where the proper size thread and the proper needle is critical. That thread has to fit in that slot. You can look at any of your household sewing machine needles. If you look at it carefully, you'll see this groove. The thread has to fit in there. Uh, if it doesn't, you're going to have uh, thread problems. Uh, it'll either fray or break. Uh, also, this needle has a, what's called a scarf. This is a little area in the needle where uh, it's actually cut into the needle so that when the sewing hook comes by, it has to catch this in this area. Yep. Okay, as the needle goes down through the fabric as we have here, I use my hand as the fabric, it's holding the thread against the needle and goes down until it's on its way back up. Now on its way back up what has to happen here is there has to be a little bit of a loop created here so that the hook that's coming by the needle has enough space to, to get in between there. This is where the physics parts comes in. 
As the needle rises, the thread wants to hold on to the fabric, and look what happens. There's now a loop there. Now the hook can come through here and get this easily. If, if it does not form a loop here, the hook can't get in there to catch it. That gives you a skip. Now, we're at our bottom position on this, and we've left the presser foot off so that you get a good view of what's going to happen here. And to give you a little bit of advance notice, you want to be looking right here where the needle is going to start to rise up out of the fabric. And I'll begin to raise it now. See, as I turn the needle, see how the needle is pulling the fabric up? Up, up, up. And of course, this is a little bit of a... Uh, I would say probably a extreme example because normally you're going to have a presser foot on here. But bear in mind, when you have a presser foot on your machine, there's still a slot in that presser foot and the fabric is doing the same thing. It's now wanting to come up through that little slot. It doesn't have to come up much before that loop is collapsed and you now have a skip stitch. That's what flagging is. That's this motion of the fabric with the needle going up and down through it. You have to eliminate that. In order for a sewing machine to form a stitch, the requirement is that the fabric be very stable at the point of entry of the needle. And that's why knit fabrics are so hard to work on, because they're so soft that they allow the, the fabric to grab onto the needle and come up through that small slot in the foot and in the plate. That's enough to collapse the, the loop and therefore you get a skip stitch. Or you get a loop or some, some form of that. So you want to always make sure that your fabric plies are tight like a drum head almost. And you can achieve that either by using the right fr presser foot and for a lot of people they'll reduce it down to a single needle uh, needle plate where the the hole of the needle is just the size of the needle just a little bit bigger it's not a zigzag plate it's a straight stitch plate um, you also want to use a sharp needle so that you're not pushing a dull needle down through the fabric causing it to stretch uh, so proper needles type and size is required but flagging is the primary problem with free motion people because they haven't figured out how yet to apply enough pressure to the fabric to create the stitch and loose enough to be able to move it freely. That's the trick. It's like learning how to play the violin. This is one of those deals where you, can't, you can blame the machine, but it's not the machine. You have to learn. It's a touch. It's a feel. It's something you have to learn. To, it's a skill level that on, you're only going to get with a lot of practice. Just like violin lessons. You can buy a great violin and you can blame the tuner because it doesn't sound good. But <laughs> the chances are you haven't learned to play it well. And that's the case with free motion. The frustrating part for free motion people that are trying to learn is they really want it to be the machine because the alternative is they have to get better themselves, and that's not easy to do. So, as you can see in this demonstration, this is an extreme level of flagging. Uh, but it's the principle that you have to look at. And with that much movement, a little bit of movement on your fabric, and the, the machine is going to skip. It's a physics problem. You, 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 that's just what it is. So, uh, for embroidery people, same thing. If you have uh, poor stitch quality on your embroidery, you don't have it hooped tight enough. You don't have it stabilized properly. The fabric has to be very stable at the point of entry where the needle goes in. Uh, if it's not, if it's at all uh, possible for it to flag there, that's where it's going to happen, and that's where you're going to get a skip. So, another tip from Uncle Creepy.